Hello everyone. In this episode, I'm going to do a little bit of Unreal Engine fiddling. In particular, I'm going to show you how to set up these uh, Sinti characters with the newfangled Unreal Engine 5.1 setup. So it's changed significantly from back in the day in Unreal Engine 4, in which we had to retarget the animations. In this case, we're not doing that. So this is definitely Unreal Engine 5. Look at the foot IK. We have it and it's live. And the Sinti character is being driven with the Unreal Engine skeleton Quinn in place and we're going to do this with the help of a retargeter asset and so this this whole animation process here is happening live under the hood let me just quickly show you how this works in my third person character this is the Sinti mesh and that is in fact parented to the regular Quinn mesh which is this one and the mesh is set invisible so if i go and make that visible then you can see that underneath it there's really that original mannequin driving this and the beauty of this is that a we don't have to retarget any animations and b we have an independent animation blueprint that will be driven from the bone rotations of the original skeleton so let's have a look how to set that up from scratch all right, so I have a new project here that is a third person template without starter content. The only thing that I've just migrated into this are the Polygon nightclub assets here from the project. When I hit play, then we can walk around with Quinn. So let's go and replace her with a Sinti character. I'll hit escape and have a look at my player character. So that's under characters here. And uh, nope, it's not. Sorry, <laughs> it's under third person, under blueprints. And here's the BP third person character. Let me go double click that, open it up and dock it at the top because we're going to have to go into there and make some adjustments later. I'm not going to touch the code here in the event graph. I'm going to leave all that alone. I'm going to just replace or basically add that Sinti skeletal mesh to the viewport in a moment. What drives this magic under the hood is a combination of an IK rig and an IK retargeter and also an animation blueprint that is being driven by the retargeter. So we're going to go and put these things in place in reverse, so to say. We're going to start with the IK rig. In fact, if you dive into the characters folder and have a look at the mannequin UE4 folder under rigs, you'll see that Epic have provided these assets for you. So if you ever wanted to convert Unreal Engine 5 animations to the 4 skeleton or more likely vice versa, 4 to the 5 skeleton, these things can help you out here. We're going to have to go and create this thing from scratch. So this is an IK rig for the Unreal Engine 4 mannequin. And these are the retargeter assets. One is from the 4 to 5 and one is 5 to 4. It's a little fiddly to set up, so it's quite nice to know that they come with the third person template. So I could create this from scratch or just copy this and then put my Sinti skeleton in place. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go and left click and drag this over into my Polygon nightclubs folder and say copy here. And then I'm going to open the nightclubs folder here and I'm going to start with this guy. I'm going to double click the IK rig from the Unreal Engine 4 mannequin. I'm doing that because the Sinti characters are compatible with this skeleton. It's just, you know, this is not the preview mesh that I want in there. On the bottom right, we see all these IK chains that have been set up. So in the viewport, you can see these yellow things. And that's basically the start and end of an IK chain. And Unreal Engine uses that to infer where the arms or where this bone chain and then no matter what these bones are called in the compatible skeleton or the incompatible skeleton rather it'll just infer what needs to be done there so and um, this we're going to tweak most of this is in place all we're going to do is change the preview mesh so i might just go for the bartender female here and here she is. Shaders are being compiled. A few warnings are coming up. She doesn't have any hair, but we're going to deal with that a little bit later. So the most important thing right now is that we need to tell this IK rig what the IK chains are. And as I said, most of them are in place, but some of them, namely the fingers here, they need to be changed and we can do that. So spine is from spine one to spine three. So that's correct. Left arm is correct goes from the left arm to the left hand but then the left pinky that needs to be changed because we don't really have pinky fingers on the Sinti characters we only have the three finger skeleton and I'm going to map them so that the little finger and ring finger are both on the finger and the middle finger and index finger are on the index finger and the thumb is on the thumb so that's what we need to fix otherwise the fingers look crooked so we'll do 
left pinky is going to be finger one is the start and the end of that is going to be finger four like so we can see that good stuff then the left ring finger is going to be the same thing so finger one left and it ends at finger four left so those are the ik chains that i'm just telling unreal engineer this is where that is so that it can infer that then we have the left thumb that is called thumb one and it ends at thumb three so that's correct the left middle finger that i want to map to the index finger so it starts at index one left and then it ends at index finger four left then we have the actual index finger, which is also incorrect. So that needs to be index finger one and ends at index finger four. And that's the left hand taken care of. Now we need to do the same for the right. So once again, the right arm is correct, but the right pinky is incorrect. We're going to go and move that over to the regular finger. So finger one right to finger four right. Then the ring finger, same thing. That is finger one right to finger four right. Then we have the right thumb is correct. Then the right middle finger, that's going to be going on to the index finger. So that's index finger one right to index finger four right. And then on the actual index finger, that also needs to be changed to index finger right and index finger four right. There we go. There are some other options in here, like twist bones and stuff. The Cindy characters don't have that. So you get a lot of warnings here. You can ignore them for now, or you can remove the IK chains that you don't have. But for now, that's really all we needed to do here. Now we can either close this file and then go and have a look at the scary retargeter asset next. I've actually not renamed it. I should have really done that. That's, that's how I'm going to do that. So it's the IK rig Sinti, I'm just going to call it. It doesn't matter when you rename it, so the, the changes are all still there. There we go. Everything's good. Uh, now we need to do the IK retargeter asset. And that is something that requires an IK rig to exist, namely the source IK rig. So we can't use the Sinti rig for that because that is the destination IK rig. We need a source rig. So right click here, head over to animation, IK rig, and choose IK retargeter. That's my face is in the way. This is it. In Unreal Engine 5, this wasn't in its separate section now in Unreal Engine 5.1 it is. So select that and it'll, it'll ask you what IK rig we're using as a source. It's not the Sinti rig. It's not the UE4 mannequin. It is our UE5 mannequin, namely this one here at the top. So let me go and click that, rename it. So it's IK retarget Sinti. And then I'm going to go and double click that to open that comes in a little bit large and here I can see Manny so Manny is if you're not familiar with this Manny is the main skeleton and Quinn is a child of this class so that's why the skeleton looks a little bit different than this one this is Quinn this is the female skeleton but again that's a child of the parent of, of that one here but this is the actual source that's driving it so up here in the top right we have the IK rig asset that I've picked. We also have the source preview mesh, and then we need the target here. And that is the Sinti rig that we've just made. So I'm going to go and drop that down and choose my IK rig Sinti. And it now comes in with the same preview mesh that I've just selected there. This gives us the opportunity to now tweak the poses. So we've got both characters in the same place. My Sinti character is a T pose and Manny is in an A pose. So let's go and make those adjustments here. If you don't want to see them on top of one another, you can use the target mesh offset values here. So like 150 puts it right next to that. And that's nice to see these animations side by side. But for adjusting them, uh, set this to zero and then go and adjust the pose, like basically like we used to do. And that happens in the target. So at the top here, source, that's uh, the Manny and the target is basically our Sinti character. Click over here to edit pose and now we can go, we can't select anything in the viewport anymore like we could do in Unreal Engine 5. So in 5.1 we have to go into the skeletal hierarchy and um, select the joint rotation that we want to move. So in my case that's the left clavicle here and there is actually a small bug in Unreal Engine 5 that I'll tell you about in a moment. I find that the clavicle can come down by about, whoops, that's left, isn't it? Sorry. <laughs> so the clavicle can come down by 10. And then the left upper arm 
can come down. This is the bug actually when you go and select something and you want to make a change. This doesn't light up immediately. So you have to move the viewport for that to work. So this needs to come down to, I think, 40. Yes, 40 is probably correct. And then the lower arm needs to come forward. So if I click the lower arm, I can see the gizmo, but sometimes it just doesn't light up until I just move the viewport and then I can go and left click and drag this uh, this ring here. It's one of those things. I'm gonna bring this forward by 40 so that the angle is correct. And I also find that the hands can also come in by about 10. So left hand, I want to go and just bring that in. Otherwise the hands feel like they're sticking out. So 10 is probably enough. We can always adjust that. So I can close the left clavicle down, do the same thing on the right here. So right clavicle comes down by 10. Upper arm comes down by, did I say 40? I think so, yes, yes indeed. And then the lower arm right comes forward by about 40 as well and then we're going to use the hand and bring that in just a tap like so ding perfect okay that's the arms the legs are pretty much correct but i think being a stickler for details i think they could move not by 10 but by 5 i would imagine so just right thigh and left thigh the 10 is a bit too much but i think 5 is exactly what we need to put them in the correct positions here. So right thigh and then left thigh as well. Perfect. Now that is that. And now we can go and leave the edit mode. So just click on that and click off the skeleton anywhere here in the viewport and that'll bring your assets back. And now you can go and move the target mesh over by maybe 150. And then we can go and preview some animations on our character. So down at the bottom here, you can pick something like, I don't know, does, do we have run? Yes, run forward. And now we can see what our converted animation would look like on the Sinti characters. And that looks pretty neat. Do we have another one? Do we have something like jog? No, we don't have jog. We have run something, something else. What else we got? We got land. We got jump, we got all the good stuff. So that all kind of works. If this doesn't look great, then you can always make adjustments at that point. And once again, to stop this here, you can just go click this show target pose and make more changes. That's just done with the retargeting asset. The last little puzzle that we need is our own animation blueprint. And that is super easy because we're just going to go and reference the retargeted pole. So we just need to reference this retargeter asset uh, in our animation blueprint. So once again, just right click in here and choose animation, animation blueprint over here. And now we need to specify which skeleton this animation blueprint is for. So this is now for our Sinti skeleton, which is this one here, the SK character bartender. So this is the one, this is going to vary depending on which Sinti pack you're going to use, but it's the skeleton that is being referenced by all the Sinti meshes, basically. So that is what you need to select, not the SK mannequin from Unreal Engine or anything else. We have to have this one here from the Sintis. So we'll create that and call it ABP Sinti and open it up. And this is a completely blank and empty animation blueprint. So all we need to do is connect one node to the output pose. That's basically feeding the output pole. So click off of that and search for retarget. And then we'll find this node here under misc retarget pose from mesh. That is what we want. And that is the node that in fact requires our IK retargeter asset. So with that node selected up here at the top right, go and select the IK retarget Sinti. That's the file that we've just made. Select that. And that is all we need to do here. Now we can essentially close this as well as the retargeter, as well as the rig, and hook all that up in our third-person player character. So this is kind of where the magic happens now. With our mesh here, with our Quinn mesh selected over here, click the Add button. So not here with the, with the top node here. You want to parent that to the actual mesh here. Hit Add and choose a Skeletal Mesh. And I'm going to call that one Sinti Mesh. And in the Sinti mesh, I'm going to go and choose my skeletal mesh down here. In fact, I can bring that up from my funky new content browser. I'll go into meshes and characters. And this can now be 
any of them really. I might just go and stick with the bartender because we've kind of gotten used to her. So select her and then just go and click this little icon and there we have her. This is the mesh in the A pause. Now we need to select the animation blueprint up here. And since we've only got one ABP Cinti at the top here, we can go and select that. And that is almost that. So nothing's happening yet, but that's because nothing is saved or compiled. So let's go and do that. Compile, also maybe save all. And now when we go over and play this, then we see that, hey, this is kind of cool. It looks like still two characters are moving around on top of one another. So it looks like the easiest thing now is to just switch off my regular Quinn mesh and just leave the Sinti mesh in place. Why don't we do that? So over here, this is now back in the third person character. Let's go and select my original mesh. And then in the details panel here, just search for visibility or VIS and then just disable the visibility. And then we have just our Sinti character left. Now this is almost everything, but just in case this happens to you, if you were to go and play this now, it'll kind of all work or it appears to work, but you'll see that the character is just going to go slide and it looks like the joint rotations are not updating on the target mesh. And that is because we need to make one final change over here with visibility still in the details panel here. It's this one here. It's the visibility based anim tick options. Change that from always tick poses to always tick poses and refresh bones. That's kind of the, the big secret here. But uh, just in case you've forgotten that, I thought I'd show you what happens when you don't do that. So now if you want to compile and now you play it, now the Sinti character walks around and that's perfect. Looks a little bit ugly because she doesn't have any hair, but I thought I'm going to leave that for another episode. How do we attach hair and, you know, eyebrows and glasses and all that. But uh, for now, this is how we can use Unreal Engine 5 mannequin poses on the Sinti characters without retargeting. We have the foot IK and all that. In another episode, I'm going to show you how to translate, not so much retarget, it's more like a translation process, rejig re Unreal Engine 4 poses so that they will work with the Unreal Engine 5 skeleton. And therefore you can also then use them on the Sinti characters that way. By all means, you don't have to do this. You can literally just hook up the Unreal Engine 4 skeleton like we're used to, and then let that skeleton drive the Sinti animations that might make the retargeting process of older animation sets a little bit easier. But this, I think, is a, is a nice future-proof way. Thanks to TC Mape and Angel V for making this information possible. That, together with some info from Duroc Cigar, that really made me understand the process. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.